Hey everybody. So in the previous video titled how to build a PC a step-by-step -step guide tutorial for beginners we've built a computer from scratch and uh, now uh, we're gonna update the BIOS. Now for those who watched the previous video where I built the PC uh, you notice that it had problems starting up until uh, we pulled out a memory module and placed it back in and then it booted up without a problem. So what we're going to do right now is, and uh, uh, what we're going to try to do is uh, uh, recreate this problem. So uh, I plugged the PC in into the capture card and I'm going to switch the video source right now to the capture card. And we'll see if it boots up. Powering on. And it's not, uh, it does not appear to be posting. Um, and we're going to figure out why. So, this video is also not scripted, so we're going to see what, we're going to try to figure out what's causing this. I'm going to power it off. Uh, remove the memory module again. Here's that memory module that we were working with. Installed at the back. I've actually have not seen this kind of behavior before. I've seen computers needing a, a CMOS reset. Side panel fell. CMOS reset. Uh, for various reasons before they can normally boot. I have not actually seen uh, a problem where you would have to remove the memory module and plug it back in to get the computer to start up again. That's something new, so we're going to fiddle with this a little bit. Powering it on. And my capture card is plugged in. Everything looks okay, and it's not even posting at this point. So what I will try to do next, next step of troubleshooting. I'm going to try a different uh, memory module. I have a different PC over here. It has... Um, it's an older PC with an older type of memory, but it will still work without a problem. It's not going to give us the best performance, but we're not looking for performance right now. We're trying to resolve an issue. So this might be due to a memory compatibility issue in this BIOS version. So I'm going to remove this memory stick. And installed this one right here that I have from a different PC, also DDR4. Memory installed, and let's see if it posts. Powering it on. Mm. 
nothing on the screen. So what can we try next? Okay, so. I'm going to try clearing the CMOS. Uh, there is a jumper that uh, you need to short out in order to clear the CMOS settings. Uh, so that way the computer forgets uh, everything that was configured in it uh, in the BIOS or UEFI. Uh, so I'm going to put in the other memory module that we were working with. Before. It's in there and I accidentally pressed the power button with, with my hand. Thankfully the memory was in and it booted up. So, I removed the memory module in a few times, plugged it back in, didn't reset the bias, and then it comes back. So, it's obviously working erratically. So, let's see. And it froze. Let's try resetting it. I mean, I was holding it in my hand when I accidentally pressed the power button, but when the power button was pressed, everything was inside. Uh, I wasn't pressing the button while I was in the middle of removing or adding the memory module, so got lucky there. It's good practice to unplug the power cord or at least uh, turn off the switch on the power supply before doing any work on the inside, but... I don't always follow best practices. Press the reset button. Hmm. Nothing. Try again because it does cup up sometimes. All right, so in an effort to save time, what I want to do is have a uh, BIOS flash. Uh, uh, flash drive, BIOS update flash drive prepared so when it actually does boot up it's in the system so we can flash it and uh, see if that resolves our problem. So here we go. I'm going to insert a USB flash drive into my computer and um, We are going to I'm going to switch to my computer. Now what we have here we're going to open up the file manager and we are going to go to this PC a right click uh, I mean this is an optional step we already have a USB drive 
and it's FAT32. So we wouldn't need to format it, but if you have a USB drive that's formatted and in any other file system, what you want to do is right click on it, go to format. Uh, FAT32 is by default selected. You have options EXFAT and NTFS. Make sure it's FAT32. And then I usually put this in default allocation size. This is not really, doesn't really matter too much. So we're going to start. It's going to format our drive and format complete. So now we need a BIOS update. And uh, what I'm going to do is open up a browser. And we're going to search for the model number of the motherboard that we are using. Switch off the power on the board. And it's uh, going to be Asus B450. Uh, M plus two Asus.com. Here we have uh, the motherboard that we're working with. Uh, the process is similar on on any brand uh, motherboard. So we're going to go to support, drivers and tools, and uh, we can pick anything. So we can do others because we just want the bias. So we have a few options. We have uh, beta bios uh, uh, with these. Um, with these uh, newer. Uh, uh, AMD motherboards, they, they're constantly releasing new updates for newer processors uh, to support, um, uh, to support um, well, for compatibility reasons and to optimize performance uh, with various new components. But we're using fairly old components. So what I'm going to do is download the latest uh, stable version of the BIOS. Uh, this is the first version that is running on the system right now. And uh, here, if we look at the um, version after that, it says improve system compatibility and uh, support ALC897 codec. So we're we have a new one after that. So the fixes that are in this version will typically also be in this version as well. So we're going to grab the latest non-beta version. It's going to download. Uh, then we're going to go from here to our downloads directory. Uh, we want to right click on the file we just downloaded and uh, extract all you're going to get this window and uh, leave the show extracted files and extract it'll open up a new window with uh, the extracted uh, file and what we're looking for uh, is this particular file. This is the BIOS image and we want to copy it, right click copy and just put it onto our flash drive. There. Now that we have the BIOS uh, image on the flash drive, we can go ahead and safely remove this. And uh, that's it. We'll just take our flash drive and plug it into our computer that we just built. 
turn on the power switch and of course um, switch to the proper video source for the output from that computer and let's see if we can power it on uh, we need to get ready to start bashing the delete button to get into the BIOS it's not posting so I'm going to try that again I'm going to power it off and uh, turn off the power switch this time so I don't accidentally power it on remove the memory module and while we're here we, we might as well do what I wanted to do before by resetting the CMOS there's a jumper uh, right there on the board I've shortened it with my screwdriver for a couple of seconds and then we'll put this memory module back in there and uh, since we are here uh, we just did that step I would like to show you where is this thing in our small instruction manual for this board where you would find the uh, information about clearing the CMOS uh, here here clear CMOS header so that's number 11 there it is right there on the um, for this particular board any other board will have a similar uh, thing in the instruction manual of how to clear the CMOS there's the map of relevant components for this particular board on page number one we looked at this in the previous video and number 11 is right over here on the bottom left uh, a bottom right of the board so so that's component number 11 shortening this jumper I, I know you can't see it very well but if you want a closer look uh, you can go to the your the board that you're rel um, that you're working with and uh, check the instructions of how to clear the CMOS for that particular board because not everybody's going to be using this board and uh, turn on the switch press the power button hope for the best yeah, it's sometimes it just posts and sometimes it doesn't let me see if i can just turn it off and turn it back on see if that posts this um, motherboard has the functionality of blindly flashing the um, from the USB drive while there's no CPU installed so if it comes down to it we could always try that so right now I'm just trying to get it to start up uh, with um, the way it was starting up before randomly removing the memory module and plugging it back in and see if it'll get going powered up
Turn it off and turn it back on again. There it goes. Okay. So I'm going to start hitting the delete button to get into the screen. As we can see here, this is the screen we got when we first powered it up. And it says that... What is this uh, thing? Please enter setup to recover BIOS settings. So we reset the BIOS settings uh, by clearing the CMOS and um, we get this screen. So from here we press F1 to enter setup. Now when the system is not stable, which this would be, this would qualify as not stable, it's not a good idea to flash the BIOS. But this this particular motherboard has a has a BIOS blind BIOS flashback feature from the USB. So in worst case scenario if the BIOS does get corrupted while it's being flashed, uh, it's possible to recover it. Number one. Number two This motherboard has been recently bought, and if there is something wrong with it, I will exchange it for a working board at the uh, at the store. So before we do that, let's try. Uh, so we have advanced settings over here. Let's try that flashing advanced mode. And in this board, it's going to be under tool. Easy Flash Utility 3, right there. And we have our flash drive. It's on FS0. And there's our updated BIOS image. So we're going to just click that. Do you want to read this file? Yes. So it's going to... This... Uh, this is going to take a little bit while, but do you really want to update the bias? I certainly do. So we're going to go ahead and uh, press yes. And there's a progress bar. This is very important. This process should not be interrupted. If you get a power failure uh, while this is... Um, processing it uh, this will essentially brick your board and uh, it will not brick this one because you can blindly flash it from a USB there's a button on the back of the motherboard uh, that if you if you plug in the USB drive into a specific USB port and press the button. I'm, I didn't uh, uh, check the instructions on how to do a blind flash back on this particular board. But if I do need to do that, I will go see the appropriate instructions and proceed to blindly recover the board. But hopefully, after this update, it's going to work as it should and we won't need to worry about it. So, uh, this is a little bit of live unscripted troubleshooting after our build. Mm. And then we're going to uh, reboot it a few times to make sure it boots up from cold start when the power is completely off. And if it reboots properly a few times after it boots into Windows, once once uh, it will be clear that uh, uh, that everything is working okay, we're going to go over some basic BIOS settings. Nothing like overclocking or anything like that. Not in this video. This is 
this is a longer than intended BIOS update video, but this will also uh, this was all, this will also be a, a little bit of a troubleshooting video as well, since we did a little bit of troubleshooting with the board not wanting to boot up seemingly randomly. So I have not encountered this particular problem before. Um, so in the next videos, not in this one, but, um, oh, this is a long video already. Hmm. In a future video, um, I would like to go over the tools that you would use to test new hardware and burn it in to see if it's running without any issues. Uh, also future plans, uh, installing Windows from scratch, including downloading the latest version using the Microsoft tool. Uh, and. Uh, Installing the drivers that are needed. Uh, uh, what else? And uh, uh, possibly a video with installing uh, a Linux operating system alongside Windows uh, to do boot. But in this video, uh, uh, I think we're, uh, if we are s satisfied that, uh, this works okay, uh, we're going to stop it at that point and, uh, the configuration part and, um, the, the bias configuration part will be in a separate video. This this kind of problem it doesn't happen often, but it as you can see it does happen. I'm kind of glad that it did happen uh, because um, it's just it just illustrates how uh, you get a new board and you have components that you know are working 100%. You've used them; they're from a computer that uh has worked without any problems so these are known good components and the only absolutely new never used before component in this system is the motherboard and uh, the case well the case is not relevant so the motherboard is what's causing this behavior this is actually how long the these new motherboards take to update the BIOS. <laughs> it used to be much faster, but um, the BIOS and uh, the the BIOS uh, update process is not regular. It's not like a regular writing to an NVMe SSD. There, it just. Uh, uh, updated the BIOS and reset on its own. Let's see if it posts. There it is. It posts. So let's wait for it to. What does it want? Please enter setup to recover. So we're going to press F1 to enter setup. We're going to give it default settings, load optimized defaults, and we're going to press F10 to save. 
you have not made any changes, but I loaded up to my SD folds. This is a very cool feature of these new boards. Uh, when you make changes, it gives you a summary of exactly what may changes that you've made. So, and look at that. We're, we're posting without a problem every single time right now. Brand new board out of the box. Uh, you, you see those lines, uh, no audio, I mean no video output from the capture card when the uh, card changes, uh, when the video uh, card on this computer changes resolutions. So we're back into this Windows that I previously installed on a identical system. So now if we check the CPU-Z. There's our new BIOS version. We were using 0.3.0.9 before. Let me double check that. The first version. Yes, we used 0.3.0.9 and now we're on 2.4.0.9. Uh, the only difference is uh, between the previous system that is virtually identical to this one and this new one that we built in the video is that in the previous system I used the same memory but I used two sticks of eight so they were in dual channel mode this could uh, this different configuration of memory uh, could behave differently than the same memory in dual configuration, a dual channel configuration on the previous build. That's why I may not have hit this particular problem before with two pieces of RAM and this one, since I'm using single, it was giving me this problem. Now, let's see if the problem is resolved. BIOS is set to optimize defaults. We're going to go ahead and shut down this computer completely, power it off. Power it off gracefully on its own. going to remove our uh, USB flash drive with the BIOS update and uh, let's power it back on. Posts, no problem. Boots Windows. Excellent. So this is this is really good to illustrate how a <laughs> how a simple BIOS update is important to to just keep your system healthy and stable and compatible and all that other good stuff that you expect. So, let's see uh, if um, okay. Everything else is, is as expected. And uh, let's see if we do a warm reboot. No problems. So 
that compatibility issue from the from the 0401 version the one version after the initial release looks like solved some uh, system compatibility issues okay so let's do it a few more times just just to be sure we're good let's power it off completely I'm going to turn off the power supply switch off so that way it's as if I removed power from the system completely. And uh, let's turn it back on. First the power switch, now the power button to power it up. I don't see a problem with the system anymore after the BIOS update. So this works exactly as I would expect a stable computer to work, but we still need to test the hardware, test the memory, make sure there's no errors, test the storage, make sure there's no errors. Uh, Test the CPU, test the GPU. Those are the things that you would want to do in a new system. So I'll go ahead and power it off. And I'll see you in the next video with the BIOS configuration. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope this was useful to you. And I'll see you in the next one.